Okay, so the talk this morning is by uh, Denis Benoit, who will speak on Piadic Hodge theory. And, uh, thank you. So uh, uh, I will just to finish uh, mm, uh, to some um, uh, remained about. Uh, basic properties uh, of uh, crystalline and Durham period rings. So I recall that we constructed two rings. Actually, B Durham is a field, which is equipped with uh, a continuous Galois action and the filtration. And uh, Bicris uh, uh, is equipped uh, also so by induced Galois action. Uh, Frobenius operator. And uh, we can also define uh, using just uh, the filtration on Bideram the filtration and decrease. Okay, so uh, here are some uh, basic properties of uh, these um, uh, rings. So maybe I already talked about some of them, but I will give a complete list. Now, so uh, consider the graduation of this filtration on Bidoram. So uh, the uh, factors are isomorphic as Galois modulus to CI. Sorry? No, no, you can take tensor k, but you form, that's fine without k. No. We don't need to fix k. So you can define a filtration also and decrease uh, tensor k, but uh, this is also fine. This? Yeah. Yes, sure. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, okay, uh, the Galois invariance of uh, Bideram are okay, and the Galois invariance of Bicris. are k0, where k, a, k0 is, uh, as before, the maximal unramified sub-extension of uh, k. So this is uh, totally ramified. So uh, the third uh, 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 yeah um, the third point is a fundamental exact sequence. So maybe uh, it would be better to talk about fundamental exact sequences because. Uh, there are some, uh, several ways to write more or less and code more or less the same information. So we st start with uh, uh, Fontaine missing exact sequence. So, uh, uh, let's uh, recall that uh, these two rings contain uh, the element T, which is the logarithm of a Tischmuller lift of epsilon. Epsilon is a 
the system of uh, PN for roots of a unity. And uh, that uh, the Galois group acts on uh, T as a cyclotomic character. And uh, Frobenius operator multiplies T by P. And uh, uh, we have the following exact sequence. For any i bigger or equal to zero, that's with QPTI, we go to fill i of B Chris plus. So I uh, recall that B Chris plus was a sum so constructed before B Chris. This is a subring of B Chris and B Chris was constructed from B Chris plus inverting T. And here we go to uh, B Chris plus itself. Uh, the map is given by the following operator. So the point is that this sequence is exact. Uh, so uh, here, it, uh, maybe the only immediate thing is that this term lives in a kernel of this map just because we know the action of phi on the T. So we immediately see that this lie, uh, lies in the kernel of this map. Oh, all. Sorry? Uh, yeah, this is again the filtration induced from uh, Bidoram. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the subjectivity and the exactness in the middle term uh, are not advice, and uh, 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 anyway, this is a, some uh, delicate uh, proof. Uh, there exists also an integral version of this exact sequence where uh, B Chris plus is replaced by A Chris plus. And uh, this is uh, so we can exactly determine the kernel in this case, but uh, it is uh, some fine computation in these rings. So for our goals, this is uh, this suffices. Uh, uh, and from this exact sequence, it is easy to uh, prove uh, uh, the exactness of the following sequence. The first term is the same. Here we have uh, the IF filtration of a decrease but not decrease plus. This is not the same thing. And here we have a fill zero decrease. And uh, the map is the same. Some warning, uh, fill zero B Chris is not B Chris plus. Uh, sorry? Here I uh, think it's uh, uh, okay, again, so any positive. Mm. 
This is just a Frobenius minus one, yeah, yeah. And, up, uh, and the uh, last exact sequence, which can be deduced again, it can be deduced from the sequence B, which is maybe the most important via uh, its connection uh, with uh, the curve of uh, Farc Fontaine. where this map is just a projection map. So induced by the injection of Bikris in Bidaram. And uh, in Fontaine uh, Farg uh, theory, uh, Usually this ring is denoted by BE because of uh, its uh, importance. Oh. Before uh, special notation uh, hadn't existed, but now it exists. <laughs> so, uh, in particular, uh, the exact sequence C says us that Till zero be Chris fixed by phi is QP. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, so you can take, for example, um, a, uh, uh, for example, you take uh, some, uh, so this canonical generator of a uh, uh, kernel of a theta, and it lives in, uh, B Chris plus, and you divide it by T, and this is one divided by one by P minus one, and uh, it leaves in uh, one by T B Chris plus. But, uh, so, uh, in fact, it, it lives in uh, field zero of this uh, quotient. But it doesn't live uh, in uh, Bicris plus. Sorry, uh, yes, but it doesn't live uh, in, uh, but uh, so it lives in field zero of an IT. B Chris plus, but not in B Chris plus. Sorry? Yes, yes. Um, we can take here, sorry, we can take here. Yes. But the, the idea is the same, so. We uh, get denominators, but uh, which are not uh, uh, in the kernel of theta. Uh, just uh, to finish this list of uh, uh, rings uh, of periodic periods, I will introduce the last ring, uh, the semi-stable, uh, the ring of semi-stable periods. Um, BST, which is defined 
by the following way. Let denote by x the logarithm of uh, uh, the following element, where as before, p script is a uh, this uh, element of uh, p and fruits of p in uh, uh, OC tilt. And the logarithm is always is considered as a power series, or defined as a, by the usual formula. And uh, we see that this term tautologically lives in a kernel of theta, of theta extended to the inverse piece of, in the kernel of theta QP. So this converges in the discrete valuation topology in uh, Bidoram plus, and uh, it can be proved. So this is uh, some. Uh, uh, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> uh, and uh, the point is that is x. A, X is a transcendental over the field of fractions will decrease. And uh, the ring of semi-stable periods is uh, defined formally by adding x to decrease. And uh, uh, we keep uh, this ring with Frobenius. So Frobenius is already defined non-decrease, but it is not defined on Bidoram. But view this definition in terms of uh, logarithm, it is uh, natural to define phi of x equal to px. And uh, uh, we keep uh, decrease with a monodromy operator, n, which uh, is a derivation with respect to x. Sometimes for, uh, I mean, uh, uh, some um, to uh, to make some canonical choice. Sometimes one multiplies this uh, operator by some constant, but uh, it is not Im so important in, in this talk. So uh, from the definition, it follows that uh, the monodromy and uh, the Frobenius are related by this uh, relation and uh, view the eladic grotendieck monodromy theorem where uh, the similar relation already appeared in the eladic setting. One can see that uh, this ring is a good approach toward uh, 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 in toward uh, the Piadic uh, version of uh, uh, Grotendieck monodromy theorem. So uh, now uh, I would like to talk uh, before um, uh, gen before uh, start to um, to overview the general formalism of. Uh, Fontaine's theory to give some uh, uh, particular case of uh, this theory where uh, many constructions 
can be seen uh, explicitly. So this is a case of formal groups, and uh, uh, also uh, uh, the connection uh, of this theory with um, the subject of Udi's um, lectures will be maybe more clear. Uh, the next paragraph, uh, periods of formal groups. So uh, let me start with the following analogy. So we start with a complex situation. Con consider first some k, for example, some number field k. And uh, we consider uh, an abelian variety of a k. And uh, we will consider the complex structure in X. <coughs> so we consider the usual Durham cohomology of X. Okay. So this is a K vector space of dimension. Uh, so if uh, X is uh, of dimension D, so uh, H1 Durham is of dimension 2D. And uh, inside we can consider what we will denote by fill uh, so the first term of a Hodge filtration. Which is uh, the submodule of holomorphic uh, differential forms and X. And uh, we can also uh, just note, sorry? Yes. Uh, so that they are invariants, invariant forms. So we have a two-step filtration, canonical filtration on H H1 Duram. So this is field zero. And uh, in this situation, yeah, uh, uh, maybe um, uh, also we can describe the volt Durham cohomology of X as follows. This is a quotient of meromorphic differential forms of second kind. And uh, this means that they have no logarithmic poles. Uh, quotient by exact forms. And uh, in this situation, we have a periodic period map. Between uh, H1 the RAM and uh, the homology with values in C. So the period map, which is non degenerate. So we consider X as a complex variety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So uh, yes, uh, maybe it is useful to remark that all we consider all over k all over f. Yeah, it's not so much important, but it's more nice to see these objects over k rather than over c. But so if we want to uh, uh, find the periodic analog of this pairing. in the context of uh, formal groups. So now let K be a finite extension of QP. And uh, just for simplicity, really by simplicity, we will assume that K is unramified. And uh, we will consider a formal group low, F, which is given by a power series in two variables. Uh, with coefficients in uh, OK. Uh, of finite height. Say H. And again, for simplicity, uh, only for simplicity, I will assume that F is one-dimensional. So, uh, so one-dimensional formal group. So uh, I just recall some uh, definition which uh, already appeared in uh, um, Udi's lectures. So we will consider differentials on F, which are power series. So, uh, so differential forms of this uh, type, where F is a power series with coefficients in K. And we will say that omega is invariant if and only if it satisfies so the uh, natural property that omega of f x plus x y is equal to omega x. So if we consider F as uh, the addition low. In the, oh, we can write this property in this form. So this is really the condition of uh, invariance of a form. Sorry? consider Y as Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. but, uh, okay. Um, So we have the following uh, proposition. So uh, let omega zero be dx divided by, so we take the <laughs> derivative, formal derivative of f with respect to y and evaluate it it at y equal to zero. 
uh, and uh, just from uh, the fact that when we derivate with respect to y, we, the series starts with 1, so it is invertible. So automatically this is a differential form with integral coefficients. So then uh, a form uh, is invariant. if and only if it is a multiple of omega zero. So, omega zero generates the module of uh, one dimensional module of uh, invariant differential forms. So, the proof is uh, very easy because uh, from definition, just from the definition, if you write it down, it follows already that if for a form omega is invariant, then it should be of this form. And uh, one should only check that omega zero is invariant so it follows from the associativity of a group law. So just formal associativity of group. Sorry? Star, this is a definition of, a, of that, yeah. So this thing is, uh, so F, of x, x, y, and next uh, you uh, take the derivation, so f prime x, x, y, dx. Um, and uh, from uh, associativity of uh, formal addition, it follows that omega zero is invariant. Now, uh, let denote by lambda omega zero, it's pre formal primitive. So uh, if uh, omega zero is uh, of this form, so the formal primitive is uh, this power series, which doesn't lie in OKX. But it has a coefficients in, uh, in K, in the field of fractions of OK. But the denominators are controlled, and you see that. So uh, it lives uh, in the divided powers yeah, with respect to the ideal generated by X. So it has some sense crystalline nature. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> So, uh, definition, uh, this primitive will be called logarithm of f. And uh, from uh, the invariancy of a differential form, we see immediately that uh, the logarithm satisfies the following property. So 
it transforms the formal group structure to the additive structure. So example, if we consider the multiplicative formal group law, then uh, omega zero, so we take the, we divide dx by the derivative of this power, uh, of this uh, uh, power series uh, with respect to y, and evaluate it and y equal to uh, 1, so we get 1 plus x, uh, and uh, lambda omega 0 is uh, the logarithm of 1 plus x. So uh, now let omega be any, well, any differential form, not necessarily invariant. Definition. Uh, it is not a finite height. Okay, uh, so uh, definition. So we want to define the analog of uh, differential forms of a second kind on uh, uh, abelian variety. And uh, so uh, the definition is the following. Omega is a, a differential form of a second kind. of the second kind, if and only if uh, it's logarithm, so again the logarithm is defined to be the primitive of uh, omega, uh, if and only if uh, lambda omega of f x y uh, minus lambda omega of x minus lambda omega of y lives in the maximal ideal belongs. Thank you. So uh, omega is of a second kind. If uh, it satisfies uh, this property, the property of logarithms, but only modulo p. So uh, the analogy of uh, between this uh, property and uh, the complex situation probably can be explained by the observation that if we have a differential form of a second kind on an abelian variety, so we take its uh, lift to, uh, to CD, yeah? so we consider it uh, as a function on CD, then if we form this object, we take the primitive, and take the same object, it is a periodical function. So um, another explication is that in uh, crystalline theory, 
uh, some sense crystalline theory should control the behavior of object mod p. So we consider the logarithm property, but mod p. Yeah. <clears throat> The second kind, it means that, uh, so it has no uh, logarithmic zero. So for an elliptic curve, it shouldn't have a, a diff uh, residues. So this is a form of different, uh, second kind form without residues. No. Yeah. But exact is the differential of uh, of a meromorphic function. Yeah. Uh, and now we define uh, the notion of an exact form in this uh, setting. So we say that omega is exact if uh, its logarithm is some sort of trivial mod p. Yeah. So lies in P OK. Thanks. Um, now we consider the following object, which for us will be a generalization of a Durham cohomology in the context of uh, formal groups. We take the quotient of uh, forms of a second kind by exact forms. And uh, uh, I don't uh, talk in this, uh, uh, in this course about the theory, uh, integral theory, so I don't take care of integral structures and take the tensor product uh, so with k what uh, the same yeah so this, yeah and uh, inside uh, this uh, we define Field one as the submodule subvector space uh, generated by the invariant differential form. X is uh, F. Okay, uh, what are properties of this object? So, this is a dimension space, uh, the finite dimensional k vector space of dimension equal to the 8. So uh, next, uh, uh, from the definition, from this definition, it can be seen immediately that f um, that h1 Duram f depends only on the reduction of f mod p. This is just some, some easy computation with power series. The third uh, remark is that we can define uh, first the Frobenius operator on the ring of power series. So uh, sending uh, x to xp and uh, phi will act as a usual Frobenius, absolute Frobenius on OK. 
And uh, uh, this uh, operator extends to H1 Durham. So H1 Durham is a phi module. Yeah? No. So when uh, as uh, yes, uh, this is a good remark. So H one Duram as uh, so uh, just a k vector space without the filtered structure. Yeah. And uh, sorry, uh, where is the canonicalism? The reduction, yeah. Yeah. So you're about to say Yeah. Yes. You're yeah. 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 Uh, so next, uh, one can describe the structure of this phi module. So uh, uh, as phi module, yeah. This is a K, H1 Duram is a k-vector space. Okay. Of finite dimension, which is H. It means so you consider the action of phi under the forms of a second kind, and you should check that because you take the quotient here, you should check that it is well defined. H1F is a quotient of a forms of a second kind which live in OKX. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, as a uh, phi module, um, F, so H1 Duram F is generated by omega zero uh, with uh, the relation of a form one minus alpha 1 phi plus alpha 2 phi square, so 1 alpha h phi h divided by pi of omega 0 is equal to 0, where alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha h minus 1 are 0 mode p and a alpha h is uh, invertible. OK. 
Okay. So, uh, hmm? Now, uh, yeah, I have uh, 10 minutes, okay. So, I will first state the theorem, and next, if I have time, I will give comments. Um, So this is a theorem so, which was uh, explicitly stated by Colmeza, but this is in some sense a reformulation of uh, the theory of Fontaine on p-divisible groups in these explicit uh, terms. So we keep all notation and uh, denote by TPF the Tate module of uh, the formal group F. And let VPF be the corresponding periodic representation. Okay, uh, let omega be of a second kind. And let V be an element of a Tate module of F, which we write in the form V0, V1, and so on. where with respect to the uh, formal group rho, uh, P V n is V n minus one. So then, Let's consider the following object, which we call integral or period of omega, which is a limit when n goes to plus infinity of p n lambda omega of v n hat, where V and head are elements in uh, the ring A inf such that there are lifts of V n under the theta map. So the statement is that this limit exists so is well defined in B Duram, uh, in B crease, and doesn't depend on the choice of the lift. We end head. So we have some 
element in decrease plus. Second statement, it induces a non-degenerate pairing between uh, the Durham cohomology of F and uh, so by linearity we can pass to VPF. Refelius in B Chris plus. Which is compatible with the action of a Frobenius and uh, the Galois group. So this means that if we take the class of omega, uh, and the element V in VP, if we act on uh, this class by the Frobenius, so this is phi of the period of the class. And uh, similarly, if we act on V by the Galois group, so the pairing, in, this multiplies the period, so this makes uh, G appear on the, uh, act on the period. So in this statement, uh, all, the, uh, all points uh, are easy to check, with, except uh, the, uh, the non-degeneracy of a pairing. And uh, to uh, prove this, so uh, normally one should uh, use a pass to the dual object. And uh, so uh, by general formalism, the periods of uh, dual objects are, so are given by the, dual, uh, by the inverse matrices. So the product of these two matrices so the product of a matrix of a periods of F and the matrix of periods of a dual object is a matrix of a Tate motif. So it is, it is invertible. So uh, this gives uh, the non-degeneracy of a pairing. But the dual object doesn't exist in the category of formal groups. It exists in the category of p-divisible groups. So uh, we should a little bit extend the theory to, uh, to check it. Um, so I don't, um, I don't explain in, uh, this in detail. Uh, but maybe I will uh, explain the analogy um, with a complex integration and this definition. Yeah. Again? G, uh, you take uh, an automorphism, yeah, which acts on the Tate module, yeah, and this is compatible with the action on the period ring. It says that the periods of a formal group over an unramified uh, ring are crystalline, yeah. Uh, 
but semi-stable is not crystalline. A formal group uh, for varieties, it covers only some small piece. Yeah. You should have good reduction to define a formal group, yeah. So if uh, K is ramified, so the periods doesn't live in decrease, but decrease tensor the field of definition of a formal group. Yeah. Yes, everything works, yeah. Yeah. Yes, one can one can write an integral version of this, uh, taking uh, the uh, late, the canonical lattice in H1 Durham, because uh, uh, H1 Durham, uh, this is uh, a, a, in fact a module of Giordano Manin of a spatial fiber, but equipped with uh, the filtration structure. And uh, it has an integral structure, which is also covered from the, these almost logarithms. And we can write uh, everything on the integral level. Yeah. And uh, so, no, 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 no. Yeah. So uh, maybe I will uh, just uh, uh, comment this, uh, this definition of epiadic pairing. So if we test it on the example of a multiplicative group, so over C, oh, what we do, we have a complex period pairing. Oh, here we have a canonical generator of H, uh, H1 uh, Dram. Here we have a, we can take as a path the unit circle, say S. And you take the integral of a differential form, and this gives us 2pi. But we can write the same thing differently. So we cut this circle on n pieces. And here we have a n for root of unity. So we can write this also like uh, n times the integral from 0 to zeta n dz by z. We are totologically equal to 2pi, but we can also write that this is the limit when n goes to infinity of uh, this sequence. Uh, if you do exactly the same thing over, over uh, QP or CP, over, uh, over C, Oh, if we take the integral from zero to zeta pn of a logarithm, oh, sorry, of uh, dz by uh, z, this is a logarithm of zeta pn, which is zero. So we cannot do it directly in C. But if it can, uh, we take a lift 
of zeta pn in a inf, we can take, for example, epsilon 1 by pn. So we get So if you multiply by Pn, get Pn, the logarithm of epsilon 1 by Pn, which gives the logarithm of epsilon, which is T. And this shows that T is a good uh, analog of 2Pi in the periodic work. Uh, and just to finish, uh, I have no time uh, to uh, to deduce all uh, easy but uh, uh, important uh, corollaries from this theorem. But for example, if we pass to graded rings, so we take the graduation here and we take the graduation here, we cut this period on two pieces, the periods with value in C and the periods with values in C twisted by one. And this gives the hot state decomposition for uh, VP, in particular it shows that VP is hot state. Uh, I stop here. Uh, you mean uh, the action of Frobenius on a power series? If you change it mod p, nothing changes. Uh. <laughs> Thank you.